continue this evening in these uh, series of messages on the miracles of Jesus and how we see a lot about Jesus in them, learn of Him, and from Him. <clears throat> miracles of Christ, in the miracles of Christ, there are many demonstrations of spiritual conditions that are lived out in the body. We have such an occasion before us to, uh, for consideration tonight. <clears throat> There are, uh, there are people who have lived with chronic spiritual deficiencies for a long time. They, uh, there's this, uh, the sin that so easily besets them, is how one place describes it in Hebrews 12. Sin, the sin, the weight, the sin and weight which does so easily beset you. It's sort of a chronic condition. It may be a, a condition of fretting or being intimidated by circumstances, or just a whole a host of things. We're going to see lived out here in a, in a woman here tonight that Jesus can address those situations. Mm -hmm. It may have been years that you've, you've wrestled with uh, something you'd rather not wrestle with, mm -hmm. whatever it is. And it may have taxed, tend to tax your strength. In certain, certain areas, see your heart, your heart's like a house. <coughs> It has a lot of different rooms in it. And some of these rooms are real weak. They're real. They're not what you want them to be. Mm -hmm. Well, the point here is that uh, Jesus can make every room what it ought to be. Amen. Amen. This woman that we're going to read about tonight, she, she wasn't crippled. Her limbs were all right. She wasn't blind. Her eyes were all right. She wasn't deaf, her ears were all right. But she had a, a sort of a hidden handicap. You, the, the average, it wasn't public. It was a private sort of a thing. She had a, an issue of blood. She, was, she bled without stopping. And the law even talked about a situation like this. Uh, an inordinate flow of blood made a person unclean. And they sort of, the person himself was more aware of that probably than anybody else. See, there are, some, there are some deficiencies that's not on your coat sleeve. They're not things that everybody can see. Uh-huh. You must understand, but they're very, very real. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so I'm thankful for these accounts in, in Scripture. So tonight, uh, I'm going to take the text from Mark, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. All have this account. Mark, the fifth chapter, verse 25. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather the worse, grew, ra rather grew worse. Well, that's the case. That's the case now we got before us. <laughs> huh? uh -huh. Twelve years. Twelve years. She suffered. Didn't mean the physicians beat her up. Mm -hmm. Means that she somehow was worse every time she went to them. She got worse. Yes. And she spent all her living. Mm -hmm. And she wasn't better. She only grew worse. That's the situation. When she heard, when she heard of Jesus, came in the press or crowd behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who, who touched my clothes? And his, mother, his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? He looked round about to see her that had done this deed. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what, what, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her daughter, mm -hmm, that must have sounded good, huh? daughter, mm -hmm. yes. thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Praise God. That's the, that's, that's the account. <laughs> yes. We don't know whether it's that woman's name, so you don't have to be a somebody to have Jesus work with you. Amen. Uh, you don't have to be a leading figure. 
You can be a, a person that under normal circumstances aren't, aren't allowed out in the public. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This woman here overcame that. She didn't, uh, she didn't stay sequestered. See, as soon as you hear about Jesus, you can do things you could never do before. Amen. Yeah. If Jesus is in the house, mm -hmm. it's like the, uh, the some laws are suspended. Mm -hmm. They don't apply anymore. Yes. If Jesus is in the house, the leper doesn't have to keep their distance. Oh, yeah. just change it, kind of changes. Yeah. That's right, that's right. Changes everything. And this woman, she, she, she senses this in her heart. A person may not know this. I will venture to say that this is true. If everybody has faith, they can sense this in their heart. That when they're aware of Christ, they sense that the, that the normal circumstances are suspended. And normally, where they wouldn't have any kind of a right at all to come forward, uh -huh. now they now they have the right. Amen. And your faith will will tell you this. You'll sense this. You'll be more bold when you're aware of Jesus. You'll ask things and do things you normally wouldn't do. You might be he very hesitant to do it. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the uh, at the background here. We did talk about this, I believe, the last time we dealt with these miracles. Jesus is actually on a he's he's on a mission already. He's busy with somebody else. Yes, yes. He's going with Jairus, who was the ruler of the synagogue. I mean, this is like as the ruler of the synagogue. In our today's world, it's a Reverend Jairus. Kind of a key figure. If you don't interrupt, you don't interrupt somebody like this, normally. Normally, mm -hmm. you don't. Mark 5, 24, 22 says, And behold, there cometh one of the ruler, one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. So he knew his name. Interesting, isn't it? You know his name, don't know this woman's name. And when he when he saw him, Jesus, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay your thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him. And much people followed him and thronged him. So that's, that's a circumstance. So that someone else might say, Well, must bump back, come back another day. Jesus is on a mission here. He's going to this man, this man's daughter. I've been living in this infirmity for 12 years. This man's daughter is ready to die. So she's worse than I am. You could reason that way. You might think you might reason that way in your, in your particular handicap, spiritual handicap. You say, well, there's people worse than me. I'll, I'll try and help them and you know, get to my situation a little bit later. But this isn't how this woman thought. This isn't how faith thinks. This is not how it thinks. It never thinks of Jesus is busy. It doesn't think this way. Mm -hmm. Doesn't think, well, there's someone out there. I better not bring this up now. There's another. There's something else going on now. See, Jesus, is, he does. He's a multi-worker. Yeah. So he's on the way to. And there's a crowd around him too. So it's not just Jesus and Jairus. This isn't like Jesus and the two on the road to Emmaus. Just three people walking along. This is a, this is a crowd, a throng. In fact, I wonder whether she could even see Jesus. It doesn't say she saw him, it says she heard. Yeah. She heard. So if you've seen anything of Jesus, please talk it up. <laughs> talk it up. <laughs> Some people might not be aware that the Lord is a very present help in the time of need. So if you sense him, talk it up. Tell mm -hmm. about it. Someone may hear and say, well, I think I, if this is the way Jesus is, I think, oh, I'll take my case to him. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Well, here's the circumstance. Jesus is surrounded by a great great throng much people followed him and thronged him that is they pressed they pressed in it's just like a very tight crowd gathered around Christ everybody wanted to see him so that's that's a situation normally you'd you'd go back and come another day just imagine going to the doctor's office you got this emergency and you go to the doctor's office and the people are spilled out into the hall and you can't even like get in the door for the people that are already there and you might say, well, if either and you can't get, it doesn't look like you can get to the to the receptionist to let her know that you've got some kind of a crisis. Well, you went to the emergency room down here at the hospital, and it's packed out, and there's people parked out in the parking lot. You say, well, I better try another place. Well, this this woman here knew that she tried the physicians, mm -hmm. many physicians. Mm -hmm. She tried them all, all probably all the specialists. She tried them all. You want to put it in religious terms, she'd been to all the counselors in town. And she, was, she wasn't any better. So she, she determined to get through this. She didn't say, I'm going to stand in line. 
I seem determined to get through this throng. And disease for 12 years, all three gospel writers make a note of this. Matthew says, Behold a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years. He calls her a woman. Mark says a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years. Luke says and a woman having an issue of blood 12 years. So they all make this point, 12, 12 years. You might tell us that it's kind of a wonder she didn't die. Like, how do you have an issue of blood 12 years? I mean, that, that's kind of an unusual situation to begin with. Yes. So if you've, been, uh, if you've been suffering with some kind of a situation for many, many years, here's how you should think. Well, it's not been unto death. Mm -hmm. That must mean there's some hope here. Amen. Or I'd have, or I'd have passed on because of this, or it would have overcome me. Yeah. yeah. And man, the, the call gospel writers tell us she suffered many things of the physicians. Mark says she had suffered many things of many, many physicians. Here, try this. This this will help. The other one said, "Well, but try this. This is this is a new thing we got. Try that." See, there are religious marketeers that are teaching people to try things. Try this. Try that. Jesus never did say, try this. That's right. Try that. Maybe this will work. That's right. Maybe that will work. Now, she's been experiencing this for 12 years. It's a long time, brother. That's longer than we've lived here. 12 years. And uh, the scripture says that she has spent everything she had. Mark says, Mark 5, 26, had spent all that she had. So she's penniless. Luke says, and has spent all her living upon physicians. So he's making sure he lets you know what it was on. Mm -hmm. And the scripture goes on, paint this kind of a dismal picture. That she, uh, she couldn't be healed. She was so much the worse. Mark says, and was nothing bettered so there wasn't any aspect of this condition that got better it did the blood didn't flow less or if it was accompanied by other systems they didn't uh, disappear she was no much the better but rather grew worse and Luke he gets the fact matter a little bit further Luke 8 43 says she spent all her living upon the physicians neither could be healed yeah by any. So she had something they couldn't do anything about. Mm -hmm. But see, the physicians didn't say we can't do anything about it. They tried anyway. We were blessed in Indiana with a physician that if he didn't know what to do, he'd tell us. Mm -hmm. He was a kind of a crude man on appearance. He was, I remember one time he said to you, oh, Blakely, he said, Blakely, he says, this is the kind of thing you die from. And he said, I don't know what to do with this, but this, unless something's done about this, you, you will die. Come right out and tell me. And he wasn't a man of real renowned faith, but he knew about God, and he as much as told me, if God doesn't do something about this, this make your plans. Mm -hmm. But these physicians didn't do that. Yeah. They kept on holding out hope. Now, the world does this. You really got to be on to this. Mm -hmm. Particularly people that, that are religious people. They have to be on to this. There are a lot of people who have all kinds of professed remedies that you try. I've known people that have driven hundreds and hundreds of miles to go to a special service by a person who was a renowned healer. Mm -hmm. And they drive well, hundreds of miles to see it. And when they, but they, they came back the same way. Yeah. One of my daughters was this way that finally died. He carried her hundreds of miles to a Benny Hinn meeting. When she came back, she came back with a disease plus some discouragement that she didn't have before. See, but nobody ever does this with Jesus. I really want to make this clear. Amen. That nobody goes to Jesus and comes away disappointed. Mm -hmm. All of us have had these experiences where some someone that had helped somebody else, but they couldn't help us, see? Mm -hmm. It didn't mean all these physicians were quacks. That's not what he's saying here. What he's saying was a situation she had couldn't be helped yeah. by them. 
But there isn't any condition that can't be helped by Christ. Amen. And this woman knew this. In her heart, she knew this. Now, she couldn't have turned to some Bible text and, and pointed out where it said this. Uh -huh, uh -huh. She couldn't have pointed to some one of the prophets that said that when Jesus comes, he can heal issues of blood. See, this? where would you find? How would you conclude this? She couldn't find it. She couldn't be healed. And what the scripture says, she heard of Jesus. This is what Mark 5, 27 says. When she had heard of Jesus. Not like heard of the first time. Heard he's like passing by where she's at. Just like Bartimaeus. You remember, he asked, what's going on? Is it... Well, Jesus of Nazareth is passing this way. Well, that changed Bartimaeus' day. Huh? It changed the whole day. This changed this lady's day. This is just another day. Up until this time, this is just another day where she was getting worse. But it, all of a sudden, her hope sprung up. See, faith causes hope to rise up. That I can be helped. And she came behind him in the crowd. Now, this all three gospel writers make a point. She came behind. She didn't run out to meet him. See, he was already, in other words, he's already passed. He'd already walked past where she was at. It wasn't she heard him coming and went out to meet him. She got this big crowd that went past. Mark Matthew says, all right, she came behind him. Mark says she came in the press behind him. So she worked her way through this crowd. And Luke says she came behind him. And as she's coming, she's, she's talking to herself. She's reasoning as she's coming. Matthew says, she said within herself, if I can but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Where, where did this come from? See, faith will teach you things that you can't learn any other way. You really can't. Mark says, she said in herself, if I may touch but his clothes. He normally, see, Mary took him by the feet. Remember that? She didn't touch his clothes. She took him by the, by the feet. And uh, there's other instances where he touched the people. He touched the leper. He touched the blind man. He touched the deaf man. But she reasons, she reasons, I can just touch his, his clothes. Because if Jesus is really who he says he is, everything around him is sanctified too. Mm -hmm. So this is closed, that's all. Reasoned within herself. And she did, she, she touched his clothes. Matthew says, and touched the hem of his garment. So she's like, either she's crawling, which I kind of get the picture that she was crawling on the ground. Or she she came and then stooped down, feeling unworthy. Mark says she touched his garment. Luke 8.44 says she touched the border of his garment. So she's like, right? He wasn't wearing a miniskirt. This was long, so she's down at his feet. We're like Mary. Mary didn't wash Jesus' face. She washed his feet. Interesting, isn't it? Yes. And she's down at his feet. So she got there, she touched it. That's the circumstances, that's what we've got to work with here. It doesn't look in the flesh like a lot, but you got to work with these. I'm showing you some ingredients that when you put them all together, like a, like a chef puts the material together, it ended up a great work of God. But on the surface, this didn't look like you got much to work with. You've got, a, you've got Jesus going someplace else. You've got Jesus with a big throng of people around him. You've got a woman that's already unsuccessfully been to a lot of doctors, which must have affected her attitude and her faith and this sort of thing. She had a woman's penniless, and she, she was getting worse, and she couldn't be healed by anybody else, and all she did was hear Jesus was passing. She wasn't a friend of Jesus, like Mary and Martha sent a message to Jesus because he was their friend already. She's not a friend of Jesus at this point. She's coming behind the crowd, and we're now he's on the way to heal a man's daughter, so they must not have been strolling along. Huh? Must have been a fast moving, fast paced journey on the way to Jairus' house, which have further complicated this woman catching up. And she uh, 
she's reasoning herself with the way she's reasoning. There's really no basis for it. Someone goes, where's the Bible say that? Uh -huh. huh? There's no biblical basis for this. And all she did was touch his clothes. So that, that, that's what we got to work with. Now what's, going to, what's Jesus going to produce out of this conglomeration? Well, the scripture said, as soon as he touched his hem of his garment, the border of his garment, or his clothes, and straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. Amen. Right there. How could you explain that physiologically? Right. People like to have explanations for everything. Like, how do you explain that? If you're not thinking in terms of faith and God working, how are you going to explain this? Could you explain this to a biologist and him say, oh yeah, 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 I see how that... I certainly see how that worked. Would you go to a chemist, maybe? And tell him, see, I had this flow of blood here, and when I touched this, he'd probably say, there must have been some property in that garment. that uh, must have been some herbal quality in there. That's unbelief, right? That's right. <laughs> Yes, I'm sure you hear that the works of God are logical, but only in the heavenly plane. They're not logical down here. So if you try and explain everything God does so everybody can understand, you'll like fall on your face. You, you can't explain it. It's, it sounds sounds like an idiocy to the world. This would be like casting pearls before swine. Could you imagine going to the Pharisees and saying this? They'd say, well, look how do we know you had an issue of blood 12 years? You must have cooked this up. And then all of a sudden it, it just dried up, all just stopped flowing right there. Luke says immediately her issue of blood stanched or stopped. See, so it is possible to have a chronic, chronic condition, long, 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 long time, and just stop, just like that. That is possible. Got an instance here. So you should be encouraged that if you've got something you've been living with for a long time, whether it's something in your body or in your spirit or your soul, whatever it is, it is quite possible for it just to stop mm -hmm. right tonight. Mm -hmm. You don't have to deal with it anymore. <clears throat> and the scripture tells us she felt in her body that she was healed. Now the first, the first person that knows Jesus has done something is the person he did it to. Yes. They know. She felt in herself. So this this an issue of blood, chronic bleeding head, there's a feeling that accompanies it. A, see, Jesus is able to be touched with a fee, feeling. Yeah. He's not able to be touched with our infirmities because he never had any infirmities. Mm -hmm. But uh, the feeling, mm -hmm. the feeling. <laughs> so, see, see, it's good when your feelings are changed. Mm -hmm. Up until that moment, she was feeling the plague. <laughs> mm -hmm. The issue of blood, that had the feeling. Now she felt in her body, she was, she was healed. Now, she didn't issue any prayer. This woman didn't say any prayer. How about that? She didn't say, Lord, touch me. Lord, heal me. No prayer. And as if that wasn't enough, Jesus didn't say anything. There wasn't any word <laughs> from Jesus. No touch from Jesus. If you just look at the outward circumstances, there was no reason to expect anything to happen. All you saw was a hand come out and touch the hem of the garment. This is it. How do you expect something to happen from that? Well, something did happen from that. Now, immediately, Jesus knows something has happened. Not because, like, he felt a little tug on his garment. It wasn't it. He immediately, Mark 5.30 says, he immediately knew in himself that virtue had gone out from him. Now that itself is the most intriguing, most intriguing phrase. Virtue went out from him without him losing any of virtue. Mm -hmm. see, there's power comes out of Christ without a dissipation of power. Now you see, if you use your power, you lose some. You got it's got to be refurbished. If you run a long distance, your body's got to get built up. If you use your energy in something, see it dissipates. Mm -hmm. Well, this isn't so with Jesus. He had no less virtue, even though virtue went out from him. Amen. He's like that woman who had that cruise of oil. She kept pouring, filling up mm -hmm. all these jars. The oil didn't go down. Jesus' virtue doesn't go down. Amen. And he's, as far as I know, the only one that this is true. 
Yeah, the, and in the even in the flesh he had to be refreshed. Uh -huh. In the flesh he was refreshed, but not in the spirit. Uh huh. Well, Jesus asked a question. He says, "Who touched my clothes?" Well, you got to see how this must have sounded. <laughs> the disciples. It's like a kind of a snicker in their tone, like he must be beside himself. <laughs> Look at this crowd around here. They're all reaching out. You say, who touched my... You didn't say, who touched me? Who touched my clothes? Who, who did this? And the disciples are <laughs> quick to answer. The disciples said unto him, thou seest the multitude thronging me. Look at all these people. You're after who touched your clothes. Come on. Luke is a little more specific. He says, when all denied... Oh. That's a little something Luke has. When everybody denied it, wasn't me. Well, I didn't touch your clothes. See, there's no indication when Jesus asked this that it was going, but mercy was going to follow. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Huh? He said, ooh, ooh, stand back, everybody, stand back. You know, <laughs> they all denied. Not me. It wasn't me. You gotta, gotta get the picture. Yes. Here. Yeah, you gotta be able to interpret what Jesus says. <laughs> I didn't come here to have people touching my clothes. Who did this? And Peter and they that were with him, Luke said, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee and sayest thou who touched me, like apologizing for the crowd. Like a kind of step in to intercede for the crowd. It wasn't us, it wasn't us. It was accidental. No, it's, it was, nobody meant anything by it, Lord. It was just a... Just a they didn't mean to do it. See, this woman did mean to do it. Mm -hmm. That's right. uh -huh. It is true that there were some people probably just brushed up against him, you know, on this. But this woman, did, this was on purpose. Uh -huh. Who, who touched me? Well, after the disciples said, "Look at this crowd," Jesus responds to their skepticism. He said, "Somebody has touched me." <laughs> I've often thought Peter must have said, "Whoop." Yes, Lord, you know. <laughs> How do you know somebody touched you? I perceive virtues gone out of me. Yeah. Hey, somebody touched me. Gee, there's a touch of faith. There's a touch of faith. There's a lot of people touched Jesus probably just because they were in a crowd pressing around him, but nothing, nothing went out from him. They were in the vicinity, but this was a touch of faith. And he says, somebody did touch me. You could be at a you could be in a meeting, say you're at this meeting here tonight, and there there may be someone like here among us who is especially interested in drawing close to Christ, more above what the other people are. And Jesus is the first to know this. Yes. Somebody, somebody, you know, he knew who it was. That's right. I understand. Well, the woman it said, and then it says in Mark 5.32, it wasn't just, he just didn't say this. He says, he looked around about to see her, to see her. He knew who did it. <laughs> he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. I just got to get the picture how this must have looked. They're used to like Pharisees and Sadducees. I have an idea. They said, back, everyone stand back. And he's looking around about. And the woman, now she's seeing Jesus look around. She's heard him say, who did this? No indication that it's going to be a blessing or he's going to say, well done, or anything like that. And the woman, Mark 5.33, says she knew, knowing what was done in her. So she said, it was, it was me. I know it was me. Well, how's it going to sound if I step up and say this? How are people going to... How's this going to sound? It's going to sound like maybe I was healed of insomnia. How is anyone going to know that this is legit? See? A person takes a certain risk when they talk about what God's done for them, what Christ has done for them. You take kind of a risk when you do this because there's some people very skeptical. They say, come on, you know, this, this is just your imagination. So she's sort of taking a risk. Luke 8, 47, he adds a little something. He says, when the woman saw that she was not hid, <laughs> And yeah, she knew when Jesus said, who did this? He's not going to let this drop. Mm -hmm. Hmm? She's going to have to come out into the open. She knew it. Wasn't hid. And Mark says this of her. said, the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. Which I have an idea he had to do with. I've been to a lot of physicians. 
I've had this 12 years. I've been getting worse and worse. I heard you was coming by, and I, de I determined in myself, if I can touch, if I can just touch your clothes, I'll be healed. She told him all the truth, and I touched your clothes. I did, Lord, it was me, and when I touched him, I, I was healed. She told him all the truth. The first person you want to tell when God does something for you, Christ is Christ in God. You Amen. Want to, you want to tell, they're the first ones you want to tell. Amen. Amen. So she told him all the, all the truth. Luke 8, 47 says, When the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling. Trembling. And falling down before him, she declared unto him, Before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. So she spelled, spelled it out. She spelled out her medical history before all the people. Well, I tell you that when the Lord really does something for you, a lot of people doesn't intimidate, do not intimidate you. When, when the Lord has really worked to work in you, you kind of lose your timidity. You're, you're able to speak up about it. Well, Jesus, he affirms the woman's faith. He tells her why. He doesn't say, well, of course you were healed. You touched my clothes. Of course. Mm -hmm. He doesn't say to her, I healed you. Here's what he says to her. Mark, Matthew 9, 22 says, Daughter, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour, which means the blood never flowed again. Mm -hmm. Mark says, Mark... 534, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. Be whole of thy plague. Don't, don't, don't expect it to come back. Luke says, Luke 8, 48, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. Now, it's important to note this. Why didn't he say, I made you whole? Why didn't he say that? Why did he say, your faith has made you whole? See, you might think it'd be better to say, my, I made you whole, or my power made you whole, or my, my grace made you whole. Or it's because I'm merciful, that's why you're whole. It's because, because I'm powerful, that's why you're whole. Why would you say that? It's because you get assurance from faith. Mm -hmm. Amen. The scripture says in Hebrews 10, 22, you come to the full assurance of faith. He focused on what he gave her in the first place. Mm -hmm. Faith, in your faith. In other words, this isn't all your faith can do. Yeah. <laughs> See, you could go, you're going home with the same faith that did this. You're going home with it, so let's go to work on some other thing, perhaps. Now, I want to draw a few conclusions from this event. One is, if it looks like Jesus is focusing on someone else, it doesn't mean that you can't be personally blessed. Sometimes it looks like Christ is concentrating on somebody else. I've even seen this in, in meetings that happen. You, there's someone that's particularly... Blessed. It may be a speaker, it may be a hearer, it may, you can just sense someone's got the blessing. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you can't have it too. Mm -hmm. And lingering problems do not need to diminish hope. This woman had a lingering problem for 12 years. Must have been very discouraging. Try this physician, try that physician. Nothing, no much the better. But hope still can survive. Hope can survive a long time, brothers and sisters. You can cling to hope a long time. Amen. Simeon clung on to it to his old man. Amen. Had this hope, you'll not die till you've seen the Lord's Christ. <laughs> hope can survive. That's why you need it. You can't survive without hope. You got you gotta have it. Another thing, when men can't help you, don't stop looking. Don't give up. Don't come to the fellowship and say, this is it. I was diagnosed. That's right. And this is it. Please pray that I'll die well. Well, you may. I mean, you may die. I understand. But this isn't your first recourse. <laughs> your first recourse has got to be to God. Say, Lord, uh, I admit now, I admit, the physicians couldn't do anything. They couldn't help me. Or the counselor couldn't help me, or whoever. That doesn't mean you can't be helped. 
And in our religious society, you really got to work at this. Let me tell you, you have to work at this in this society because right. in the religious world, they give too much credit to the diagnoses of men. That's right. And not enough to, to Christ. Christ didn't even diagnose this case openly. The woman did. She diagnosed the case because she had faith. And you, you got to really see this, that Jesus gave the woman faith and that's what moved her to say, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, then this will, I'll be home. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. And the trend downward with things growing worse, it can be aborted. It can. It doesn't make any difference what the situation is. This is lived out in a human experience here in our text. Mm -hmm. the woman's on the downward, downward, 12 years, downward, downward. You, know, you could statistically, what kind of hope, if, if this is a day when statistics are a big thing. 60% of all people, you know, or 80% of all people that are not Christians by the time they're six can't be converted. That's a bonehead of religious statistic. We say, well, what kind of statistics would you offer here? Let's call the statistician and say, here's the facts in the case, work out some formula and tell me what the chances are that I could be healed of. They say, well, it's like zero, that's what it is. So this is, your case is not a case for statisticians. It's not something that you study to see who else has been in this case and how successful have they been and so forth. That's, that's out of order in these, in these things here. And it's possible to use up all your resources and not have anything in exchange. This woman, you spent all her living and was no much the better. So it's possible for us mortals to spend all our resources on something that doesn't help. But if that's the case, you don't sit in the corner and say, so foolish was I. If that's the case, you've got to find Jesus somewhere and, and that'll make up for all the other mistakes. Yeah. And think in terms of being able to trust Jesus. See, if you can just get into where he's at. Mm -hmm. Even if there's a lot of the people, or even if there's like holy angels around them, mm -hmm. with the cherubim and seraphim mm -hmm. and the four creatures, living creatures, and the 24 elders. You say, Whoa, what's the, how can I break through all that? Well, you, if you don't break through all that, you're going to stay just like you are. Yeah. you got to break. You see, Jesus is harder to get to now than he was then if you want to look at it from a human point of view. Mm -hmm. Now he's in another domain. Mm -hmm. He's not walking down the street. Now he's surrounded, his throne surrounded by a multiplicity of personalities. Talk about a crowd now mm -hmm. pressing around him. Amen. See, you've got to believe in your heart. If I can touch Jesus, everything will be all right. Yeah. That's how much virtue is in Christ. Mm -hmm. You can't come in close proximity to Christ and nothing come out from him. Amen. See? He that cometh to me, I'll in no wise cast out. Here's an example. Here it is living out right here. She came close. She wasn't repelled. Instead, he met her with virtue coming, mm -hmm. coming out from him. So think in terms of being able to touch Jesus. She said, if I can. That's, a, that's what she reads. If I can. But she just didn't sit and speculate, try and map it out. Let's see, there's, there's a hundred people. I'm kind of weak. I, she didn't think it out that way. She just she proceeded on the basis of being determined to get there. That's what faith does. This is how faith reasons. If I can means I'm going to proceed on this. Be, I'm going to proceed with this in mind. And uh, how you think does make a difference. Yes. On your way to Jesus. How you think is going to make a big difference of whether you get there or not. Mm -hmm. If on the way to Jesus you're saying, I'm so unworthy. I, I don't know if this is going to pan out or not. I mean, think of all the opportunities I've missed. Huh? If this is the way you think when you're coming to Jesus, you're not apt to get there, I'll tell you right now. Because why? Because Satan can take thoughts like that and just kind of yeah. bludgeon you down. So how you think in your approach says, if I, if I can just get there, if I... If, I, if he will just hear what I have to say, just you think in those, these kind of terms and proceed, things will be better. And get as close to Jesus as you can. She didn't say, if I can get close enough so he can hear me. Yeah, that'd be one approach. Hey! Hey! You know, there's some people like that. They come to Jesus like that. They get just far enough from Jesus to holler. Yeah. But see, this woman, she didn't think that way. She's not thinking of getting his attention. She was thinking of getting his blessing. Yes. Yeah. 
It's a, it's a lie. Even though we know doctrinally, we know if Jesus gives you his attention, he's, he'll, do, he'll extend mercy. But she, she didn't have any guarantee he was going to do that. So she's just banking on getting close to him, believing something will happen. Mm -hmm. You do the same thing. Ultimately, too, you can't hide what Jesus does. Mm -hmm. If Jesus really works in you, He's not going to let this stay secret. That's right. You say, well, what about that demoniac? He told him a gathering demoniac. Don't tell anyone. Yeah, that's true. But then he had it written until the whole world knows about it. So it wasn't like a permanent arrangement. Mm -hmm. Don't tell anybody. Eventually what Jesus does is going to get out. Like this woman, you see, it can't be hid. And when you know what's been done in you, tell it. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus told that demoniac, go tell what great things I've done to you. Tell it. Don't keep a secret. I'll tell you why. If you, if the Lord has done a great thing and you, you've received a great blessing from the Lord and you don't tell it, that blessing will get old in you. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon you'll forget it. Mm -hmm. It'll take some monumental thing to wake you up to it. Tell it when you hear it. And here's another thing. Jesus' works can't be explained to the flesh. Yeah. <laughs> it, can't, it can't be done. And then finally, place your stress on, on faith. That's where Jesus put it. Jesus kind of, when Jesus told this woman daughter, in other words, this is what happens when you're related to me. <laughs> daughter. This is what happens when you're in relation to God. Daughter. Mm -hmm. She was a Jew. This is a Jewish woman. You know from this way, he said, daughter, she was a woman of faith. She had, uh, she had heard enough that she knew she could obtain a blessing from Christ. And then he said, your faith has saved you. See, he set, he set the whole thing in a proper view. Don't think, don't think now that this is the way you get healed, is touch my clothes. You can imagine. There were some people that, in the gospel that says they tried to touch his clothes. Some people, they saw that this happened to other people, and they thought it happened to them if they could touch his clothes too. Or you might say, here's a, the formula for being healed, healed is you've got to have someone spit on the... And the dust make clay and put uh -huh. mud in your eye, and then you got to go wash it off on a sacred fountain someplace. See, some people would make a procedure out of this. So Jesus uh -huh. said, "No, oh, this is not a procedure. Uh -huh. It isn't because you touched my clothes. It's because you had faith. Uh -huh. That's right. why." Well, those things I leave with you to ponder, uh -huh. to see that this is uh, exposing the uh, the unseen spiritual world is like exposed to you uh -huh. here, how things operate. That eventually, if you really want a blessing from the Lord, you've got to get down to the point where you reason, if I can get close to and touch Him, mm -hmm. that's going to be the resolution of the situation. Yes. Mm -hmm. you, you don't think in terms of a formula. Mm -hmm. if, I can just, if I can just maintain my daily devotions, mm -hmm. if, I can, if I can just every day pray at six, well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this, <coughs> understand. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's your faith that yeah. sanctifies what you do.